will have an amazing job. And um, I, I often say, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I'd still turn up for work. Um, I, I, I can't really imagine a better job than the one I have. So the contact that I have with my patients and the involvement in their lives, as well as the more scientific aspects that, that, that I'm involved in here in the Institute and the research. I've known since quite early in my medical training that I wanted to be a psychiatrist. I was particularly interested in the sort of psychological side of the patients that I saw when I was training. Um, but it was a surprise to me that I wanted to be an old age psychiatrist. I'm still not completely sure why, why I made that, 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 uh, that, that career choice. But I do enjoy working with older people. And there's, again, as you see in the film, they are extremely likeable and rewarding people to work with. And the mixture of problems that they bring uh, is also fascinating. So no two patients are exactly the same. So colleagues who aren't involved in the world of well, the psychiatry will often say, well, doesn't it make you go mad working as a psychiatrist? And I don't think it makes you go mad, but it certainly makes you much more uh, tolerant of, of some of the kind of quirks and eccentricities that, that, that people present. And I think the danger is that that tolerance can sometimes lead you to behaving in a slightly eccentric way yourself because you're no longer kind of monitoring your behaviour and the things that you say in the way perhaps that, that lay people do. So I know that a lot of my friends, if I'm discussing patients that I'm seeing, or I'm discussing the way I feel about my job, I can see them becoming slightly anxious and disturbed by the way I speak. But it's not because I'm developing a mental health problem, it's just because I'm, I'm so comfortable and familiar with the kind of language of, of mental health difficulties. Now, I, I, I live very close to the Maudsley and you know, I brought my children up sort of in, the catchment, in my catchment area and we would often bump into my patients when we were out shopping or on our way to the cinema or, or, or going to school. There's a lady who lives in our road who has schizophrenia who would quite often stop me and, and, and complain that she thought she was George Bush and Tony Blair as well as herself. And I, I, can, I can remember she said this to me in front of my children when they were both un, under 10 and um, they just thought this was very interesting and, and, and you know a little bit troubling but it was something that that they wanted to talk to me about and, and thought was fascinating. So I think people are very afraid of things they don't understand and you know because mental illnesses are illnesses that we don't understand in the way that we do heart attacks and pneumonias and appendicitis it's quite natural for people to be anxious and frightened about them and that that anxiety I think does breed a lot of misunderstanding and fear and uh, one of the reasons we were very keen to make this series of programmes was we wanted people to realise that actually these are just illnesses, just like any other illness. Um, the people that get them aren't strange or eccentric or unusual, they're just like us, and they can get better. And when they get better, they return to their families and, and a normal, happy, happy life. Mm -hmm.